He took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It made its debut in 1979, and it became a great success, no matter in what language you called it. A joyeux festin in French, a cajita felix in Spanish, or junior tute in German. It all means the same as it does in English. It's a Happy Meal from McDonald's. It's a kid's meal. A burger, a cheeseburger, or chicken nuggets. Small fries, or if you want to be healthy, apple slices. Soda, milk, or juice, and of course, a toy. It's a meal designed to appeal to kids. Well, today... In our gospel text, we find Jesus sharing a meal with two disciples. It's a meal meant specifically for them. One that provides happiness, but more importantly, joy. Throughout Luke's gospel, meals sitting at the table with Jesus play a very important role from Matthew to Zacchaeus, from the twelve in the upper room to the two at Emmaus. Sharing table fellowship was essential in Jesus' ministry. And it seems like each of these meals shared three things in common. The presence of Jesus, his teaching, and his eating with sinners. And the meal that Jesus shared with two disheartened disciples also revealed something new. Now imagine the state of mind these two disciples were in as they trudged along the road that led to Emmaus. In my work as a police chaplain, I've met with people in some of the worst times of their life. And to these two, they experienced about the worst critical incident they could possibly experience. They were traumatized, walking slowly away from Jerusalem, heads down, sad-faced, hearts heavy with grief, the dreams of their future, first buried in a tomb, and now it was gone. They had no joy. They had no peace. They had no hope. And they were moving away from Jerusalem, away from their source of support. Ever felt that way? Disappointed? dejected, like there was no hope. You see, hope is a very powerful thing. I remember reading a book by a man named Viktor Frankl, a psychologist who was imprisoned in one of the concentration camps during World War II. And it was at mealtime he could see if prisoners had hope or not. For when they were given their brief little bit of bread, he'd watch. And the people who slowly ate each crumb, savoring it, they had hope. They believed they were going to exist another day. But the people who just took that bread and stuffed it in their mouth and swallowed it, he knew within a couple of days they would be dead. Then he was right. Hope sustains life. These two 
needed new hope. And into their lives came the one who is always there to walk with them and us. And that made all the difference. You see, they, had, they believe they lost Jesus. But Jesus is always there to seek out the lost and bring them back. Oh, Jesus came to them as a stranger, but just think of how he appeared to them. He fully demonstrated his humanity as he walked along with them. There he was, flesh and blood. Yet at the same time, he now demonstrates his full divinity. It says their eyes were closed, shut tight, well, how did they get closed? He closed them. He has the power to do that for his purposes. It's he who withholds their sight. And then later, he'll provide it again and then disappear. You see, it's Jesus who recognized their problem. And he did what a loving Savior would do. First, he listened to them. And then he taught through the word. You see, they, like even so many people today, they know the facts of the resurrection. I don't know of anybody who now questions that there was an empty tomb. It's a fact. Even atheists will admit that. But why the tomb was empty, that's another story. And that takes something beyond the understanding of these two or beyond the understanding of any one of us. It takes the Holy Spirit working through means that provide the faith to believe the facts are real and important and apply to us. That's what our Savior graciously supplied to them. And that's what he provides for us. Think of it. Jesus, the word of God made flesh, now shares the word of God to these two on the way. Words of God's plan of redemption and salvation for a world that could only be accomplished through the suffering and death of the Messiah. Only through his death on the cross, only through his resurrection from the tomb, could we be saved and be given eternal life. And he was talking about himself all the time. Jesus pointed them back to that cross that they were mourning, back to that open tomb that they didn't know what existed from it. The mood of these pilgrims was now changing, but they still needed more. So they invited him to eat with them. And then, at that moment, when Jesus takes the bread and blesses it and breaks it and gives it to them, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. What an incredible moment. You realize this is the first time on that Easter day that Jesus shares a meal with any of his disciples. And there he is recognized as the crucified and risen Savior. But there's more. Remember on the road, Jesus opened up the old what we call the Old Testament to them? taking them from Genesis all the way through the prophets. I'm sure along the way, he mentioned the first meal that involved disciples. It occurred in a garden. The first two disciples, they shared a meal, but it wasn't a happy one. It brought sin into the world as Adam and Eve feasted on that forbidden fruit. And what did Moses say? Their eyes were opened 
But now their eyes were open to the reality that evil had entered the world through them, that sin had entered the world through them, that death had entered the world through them. And now, as Jesus is revealed in this meal, the answer to all that sin and death is provided. It's realized. It's now taken away. Their sin, Adam and Eve's sin, and yours and mine. Our sins are forgiven. God's plan is accomplished. We stand forgiven. Our eyes are open too, aren't they? You may have come to worship this morning filled with despair, with grief, with the pain of living in a sin-filled world. We could come disappointed, despairing that our life has not gone as we wanted or expected. But you came this morning hear the words of Jesus to explain once again to us he was dead but now he lives never to die again and he holds in his hand the power of the grave and one day our graves will be opened because he lives we will live again as well He opens our eyes to the miracle of Easter that says, He died and rose, and He's here, here to walk alongside us, here to carry our burdens, here to give us rest and comfort in our times of despair and grieving. But it doesn't stop there. He comes to us. In a special meal, he comes to us in a sip of bread, in a sip of wine. He comes to us in a totally dramatic but ununderstandable way to assure us he is present among us that our sins are forgiven, and the meal that we share together with our risen Savior is only a preview of the eternal feast that's going to be given for all of us. He comes to make you and me resurrection people, not filled with despair, but hope. Not filled with sadness, but excitement. Excitement that we can share with others around us. What did those two do? They ran right back to Jerusalem. Right back to the disciples. Seven miles. And I don't think they were even breathing heavy when they got there. They were so excited to share what they had experienced. Think of all the people living in a seven-mile radius of this church. People who need to hear that story. People who need to hear the message that they too have a Savior who reaches out to them. That they too benefit from his death and his resurrection. People who need to hear the same good news that you and I carry with us every day. You know, Happy Meals sometimes are left partially uneaten. And those toys that are brought home, within a few minutes, they're often broken or promptly forgotten. But you and I are blessed to share a meal with Jesus that will last into eternity. It's a meal designed to provide comfort and peace, forgiveness and hope. Oh, it may make us happy, but it was created to always fill us with joy. In the name of Jesus, amen.
And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds focused on our risen Savior, Jesus. Amen.